Turns out he's a time wizard. But she just called him Tick Boy. Why the fuck did you ask? I'm exhausted. How do I even start this? Hi, welcome. My name is Carrie. You are getting me at peak low energy but unhinged um i just got back from europe and it was wonderful i spent half the time in libraries that blew my mind if you want to see the vlogs um i will link them down below so i'm a little bit jet lagged i'm a little confused i'm like not functioning very well today and what better opportunity than to read the fifth book of crave if you have not read crave you don't get to come in here and just find out what happens in book five you can either briefly skim through my video of it where i read it for you or you can go read it and experience it yourself i have no idea what's gonna happen and it's been long enough that i've like forgotten how crave really made me feel in the moment so i'm i'm nervous excited let's just say so where we left off again be gone if you have not read the books. So at the end of book one, where so much happened, maybe, we end our book with Hudson, yes, I can. Doubt, leave. I'm with this plan. who was Jackson's older brother that Jackson killed. Hudson is brought back from the dead. Maybe, we find out later he faked his death, so. <laughs> Regardless of if Jackson successfully killed him or not, he's like, Hudson is like, my brother tried to kill me, I should kill him. So Hudson walks into the cafeteria with a sword to stab Jackson, but our girl Grace takes a sword in the stomach or wherever she gets stabbed for the love of her life, Jackson. Luckily, before the stab wound can kill her, she turns into her true form, which was a gargoyle. She stayed in stone for about three months. So in the second book, she becomes unstoned. We learn that while she was in that kind of coma statue state, she was actually like in some other realm with Hudson. She has no memory of this time. Hudson, we learn, remembers it all. And even more so, that three month period may or may not have felt like years. Um, so we don't know what went down, except for at the end of the book, at the very end of the fourth book, we get Grace being like, oh, I remember it. So the fifth book, which is Charm, out of time. There are 145 chapters. It looks like they are, <laughs> okay, sorry, I'm looking at the table of contents. And it looks like they um, go back and forth between POVs of Hudson and Jackson, but one of these, where, where was it? Chapter 135, BDSM, Bondage, Dragons, Stone, and Magic. Oh my god, these are so bad. Good girl gone mad as hell. Fifty Shades of Fangs, no! Okay, I'm going to dive into this. Um, I'm hoping to read it in like a day and a half. The, the air is still really bad outside, so I'm going to be staying at home drinking tea and coffee. Probably shouldn't be drinking coffee, but here I am. So anyway, yes, let's dive in. I forgot to read you the Goodreads. <laughs> it's a 4.3 star with almost 12,000 ratings. And here is what it says. He's under my skin, dot, dot, dot. After Katmere, I shouldn't be surprised by anything, including the existence of a world beyond my world called the Shadow Realm. Yet here I am stuck in a strange, dangerous place with the worst of supernaturals, the monster that other monsters fear, Hudson Vega. He might be Jackson's brother and ridiculously hot, but he's a complete bona fide pain in my ass. The question is whether we'll find a way out before I kill him or run out of time. Next paragraph. She's stealing my heart. Dot, 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 Jesus. It's a truth universally known at least according to Grace, that everything is my fault. But I have a nasty suspicion that Grace isn't as human as she thinks, and she's the one keeping us trapped. Now we'll have to work together not only to survive, but to save all those we've come to call family who live here. What? <clears throat> there's more people inside of Grace? Because there's something connecting us, 
something stronger than fear and way more bloody dangerous. I forgot that Hudson's British. <laughs> oh my God, if we get more of like fucking, I'm, I was excited to read this, but now I'm like, I'm, I'm reamped. Ready, set, coffee. Okay, one sec. <laughs> we may begin. God, I miss Grace. So we meet her like right after the sword has struck her or did or did not strike her. And she's just in this blackness, inky darkness. She can't see anything. So she's like checking her body and she's like, oh my God, I don't want to be dead. Please don't let me be dead or worse, a ghost. Dating a vampire is one thing, but please don't make me a ghost. <laughs> but she's okay. She doesn't find any wound. So then she hears a voice of a very proper British accent from deep in her head. And apparently whoever this is can read her thoughts because he's like making fun of her, you know? He's like, why are you being so melodramatic? You need to calm down. But anyway, she's like, who the hell are you? And he says, I'm fairly certain I'm the one who should be asking those questions, princess, considering you're the one dragging me along for the ride. So whatever happened, Grace like grabbed Hudson and dragged him in. And then she's like, well, what the fuck are we gonna do? And he's like, well, we could turn the fucking light on, obviously. And then you just hear like a switch go and the lights come on. <laughs> <laughs> you sacrificed a jour. Oh my God, no, I forgot that the brothers are obsessed with Armani. It's such a weird detail. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Page, what is this? Page 18. And most of those pages were table of contents. Boom, ba ba boom, ba ba boom, ba ba boom, boom, ba ba boom, ba ba boom, boom. <laughs> oh my god, I forgot how much my eyes rolled while reading these books. Ugh. So anyway, she can see Hudson now, um, and he's very stylish. Okay, so Grace wastes no time being like, wait, Hudson's a murderer and a psychopath, so I'm getting out of here. So she runs out of this whatever the hell house she's in because she thinks that Hudson is keeping her there, right? Because she clearly doesn't have any power. She doesn't know that she's a gargoyle like we do. And so she's like, fine, then I'm just gonna run out of this house and outside of the door is just darkness. So she's just like running in the darkness and then there's this giant winged creature that is like chasing her and spitting fire at her. And Hudson like looks out the door and he's like, I could help, but mm. when he sees that she actually does get hit by some of the fire and like some of her hair burns off, he's like, again, I think about going back inside. After all, who am I to interfere with her newfound career as barbecue? <laughs> and so what we know is that Hudson is unaware of what lies Jackson has been telling. Jackson, to be fair, doesn't know that they're lies. He really thought that Hudson was like under their dad's spell and he thought that he really did kill Hudson. Um, all And he also didn't know, Hudson also didn't know that Leah was trying to raise him from the dead. He just like happened to show up. So he's very much in the dark. And then all that Grace knows is what she's been told that he's like friendly to the idea of genocide shall we say um so oh uh, yeah i will never read a better sentence <laughs> in my life <laughs> hudson is like so over grace and he got a little bit attacked by the dragon aka the flying fire thing and he apparently has really sensitive ears because he's a vampire <laughs> grace's screaming is like driving him insane i also forgot just how fast grace moves like remember she knew this boy for like a couple days and with jackson she was like i love him we're soulmates you know no one understands me like he does right so with hudson we're on page 39 she has spent all 39 pages being like you are a murdering psychopath i want nothing to do with you you trapped me here blah 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 screaming at him and then the second he gets a little bit hurt by the dragon she's like oh my god are you okay and then she like reaches out a gentle hand and smooths it over his aching back i break this is from hudson's point of view <clears throat> i brace myself for pain but it doesn't hurt in fact it feels nice a lot nicer than it should and fuck just Fuck. 
because everything about this situation just keeps getting so much worse. It took them, they have been together for like maximum 30 minutes and we've already got the feels. Grace! This is like every person who reads fantasy romance. <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 wait. So I think I missed something, but she just called him Tick Boy. And I think it's because she thinks he's like, now that they've decided that Hudson didn't drag them to whatever realm they're in, he keeps saying that like he's just stuck with her. And so she's decided to call him a tick because she's he's like stuck on her body, I think, unless I missed something. But what the heck? <laughs> okay, okay. Well, you know, slightly different, but I kind of like my <laughs> my reasoning for the tick comment. <sighs> oh, okay. Update. So what happened? There's only one bed. Mm-hmm. Um, which Hudson takes without asking. He's just like, I'm tired, girl. Look at my boxers. I'm going to sleep. Um, Grace falls asleep on the sofa by herself, um, looking at photos in her phone of Jackson. Um, she wakes up, and before she fell asleep, by the way, she hit the kitchen where she grabbed a knife for self-defense. She wakes up, Hudson has broken all of the knives, which I feel like, I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, he realizes that she took a knife in order to like maybe kill him, so he destroyed all the knives. And then he's like, fuck this, I'm taking a shower. So he goes off. Gray starts to look around the house and she finds books and stuff. Like the the whole apartment is huge and it has like floor to ceiling bookshelves. So she's like, oh my God, all my favorite books are here. And all of these books that I've never read before. And all of these weird locked journals. I'm picturing like I had a pink fuzzy journal that had like this tiny little lock on it. Picture that for me, will you? She touches it and the lock just opens. So she's like, oh, this must be for me to read clearly. So she starts reading it and it's like, first of all, has so many spelling mistakes and then they're like crossed out and he writes them correctly. And he's just, it's just a diary of someone being like, I just don't want to be like my dad. I just don't want to be a king. I don't want to be a vampire. Like really, really emo stuff in this diary and you want to know whose diary it is it's Hudson's <laughs> so there's just like hundreds and hundreds of Hudson's diaries that for some reason Grace <laughs> can unlock and she's decided to read them did I not just call him emo he admits to it <laughs> basically Hudson finds her reading them and he's like just good god skip the bad shit <laughs> I forgot that she's a San Diego queen. Oh my God. So anyway, um, turns out Hudson can like reach into Grace's mind. Like they're in the shadow realm, but they're also in Grace's head. It's, it's I don't understand it. But so he knows like everything about her. Um, and this is how he can just like reach in and bring a memory to the surface. So here's one. Oh my god, moo time? No, okay, so Tracy, the person who wrote this, absolutely, she at least she's visited San Diego. I'm gonna say she's not from San Diego because of her ignorance <clears throat> towards our airports, um, but moo time, I, every time we went to Coronado, I would get ice cream at moo time, so I love the rep. Great work, Tracy. Okay, all it took was a trip to Coronado and a bakery to get them on the same page. They realized that regardless of who's responsible for them being in this weird realm, it seems like they're connected in some way and the only way to get out is to work together. So that's what they're gonna do on page 85. Teamwork starts now. Okay, so they're trying to figure out why they are where they are. And it turns out that this apartment is actually Hudson's apartment, but like Grace's mind added the kitchen. I don't know, It's it doesn't matter. But anyway, so they're clearly connected, no closer to figuring out like why they are in this weird place. But Hudson decides to like peek inside Grace's mind again, and he finds all of these 
strings of emotion and he's like holy crap how can an orphan from san diego feel all of these things whatever and then he sees all of these strings which having read crave we know is kind of like her powers and stuff and so he's like weird jackson's mating bond is kind of funny colored and like ooh, there's that sparkly green one i'm not gonna touch that thing and then he sees a bright electric blue gossamer thin one that is definitely connected to me. Ooh, so Hudson has a little panic attack once he sees that string and he's like, why the hell am I connected to her? Why is it glowing a little bit? Why am I suddenly having all these feelings? And he's like, why the fuck am I noticing the color of her eyes and what she does with her hair? <laughs> once again, with the absolutely nonsensical titles <laughs> damn they've been here for eight weeks i think we just had a little bit of a time jump but they just divided the apartment in half no i forgot that hudson's like 200 years old oh, oh my god so remember how i said that there are just scenes in this book that do not need to be there and are the reasons why these books are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pages too long this entire chapter is devoted to Jackson, or I mean Hudson, excuse me, making bird calls. <sighs> okay, I can't tell if it actually feels like, does the time pass the same way for both of them? What? Because they're, uh, mm, well, anyway, maybe it will get explained, but apparently now it's been six months that they've lived together. Okay, so we are a hundred and 34 pages in they've apparently been living in one room or like one small apartment together for six months and they haven't been able to get their shit together they've just been like playing pranks on each other and trying to get under each other's skin so we had the whole bird call thing apparently hudson likes to shake her dr peppers so they explode on her grace just went through all of his underwear and drew on them and that's the thing that set him off like of all the things i feel like they could have figured out how to how to deal with each other you know um and also in response to her doing stuff to his underwear he decides to dunk her in the freezing water as a joke and then they realize that their arms are wrapped around each other and <sighs> sorry now it's been a year it's been a year and they can't make it work like they seem to have a lot in common in terms of the like prank playing okay so hudson is finally like grace is moping around and it's been a whole year that we've been in here and it's like the holiday season so he's like hey grace it's thanksgiving why don't we try and make pumpkin pie so they have this bonding moment over pumpkin pie and then she starts crying and he consoles her and realizes she fits very well into his arms i forgot that hudson can disintegrate himself he's just talking about his past his unhappy childhood mating bond update oh no so he has been like on and off checking her strings or whatever he noticed that the mating bond between her and jackson disappeared and he's like oh my god is my brother dead that's a bummer but also he's like maybe it means something else maybe it's like we're never getting out of here so whatever but he notices something else the thin string i instinctively know connects me to grace has quadrupled in size since yesterday and it's now glowing the most brilliant blue i have ever seen she, he also hasn't told grace that the jackson mating bond is gone i feel like that's gonna get him in trouble soon okay grace was like actually i haven't felt jackson in a while can you check and so then he's like it actually isn't there and she just straight up says i don't believe you and so he's like why the fuck <laughs> did you ask grace continues to read hudson's journals and she quickly realizes that like something is not adding up and like she reads through all of the abuse that Hudson went through and she's just like this is not right like he did not kill half of the school there's no way like nothing could have pushed him to that point and so maybe Jackson's wrong <laughs> okay so 
after she reads this and she's been feeling this way for a while like just really pitying Hudson and realizing that like he never experienced love and all this stuff so she runs over she's also been having panic attacks like really violent ones like she's throwing up and stuff and he's been like comforting her right so they're getting closer she reads this entry and runs to Hudson after she throws up and he's like are you okay runs to him and hugs him because he's never been loved and so she gives him a hug and then they like lock eyes for a long time and then he leans in for the kiss and they're interrupted by the dragon who is still for an entire year has still been like circling the house trying to get in but developments they run from the dragon they just run out of the house and he's basically like strap on spider monkey <laughs> you better hold on tight spider monkey okay 25 percent of the way through this book they outran the dragon for now and hudson was like by the way about that almost kiss and grace was like mm, already forgot about it what are you talking about and he was just like <laughs> Okay, noted. So that has passed. But as they were running, remember, outside of the house is always like darkness. But they ran so far that now they've seen sun for the first time in a year. And now they see like houses and mountains. And they're like, what the hell is going on? I'm going to take a quick nap. And I'll be right back. I'm back. I lied. I took a nap and then I went for a walk. And... Thinking about it, this book is once again really boring. Like I know that I've been kind of giggling, but for the past maybe 10, 15 minutes, I've been doing the skimming that I did in books three and four. We've read, what did I say? I'm on almost page 200. I'm on 191 and they are like still not friendly and working together. And so much of the book is like them in their own heads thinking thoughts about the other person and the only time that they interact is when they're playing like a not super funny prank like it's it felt feels like it's written to be funny but it's like the joke doesn't really land it's just kind of boring so i'm hoping that now we're at literally 25 percent i don't know i think there might be more characters introduced and so now hopefully they'll talk to each other i don't know but reminder her mate, they only knew each other for two weeks. I can't believe it's been a year. It's been more than a year. But like the way that the time passed, it feels like it's just been a week. And I guess like to us, to the people not in the shadow realm, it really has just been a week. But like it's not written there relationship has not progressed in a way that it feels like people who lived in the same room for a year right like they should have learned to talk to each other they should have figured things out it's just really weird that they're acting this way and they've been together for more than a year i'm just not buying it all right found out where we are so they get to those buildings or whatever that were in the distance and they are greeted by this tiny purple girl with her purple family and her weird umbras her shadow friends and they're super nice and like welcome them into their home it's cheerful it's good turns out they are in the shadow realm okay good to know where they are the door to like between the realms the shadow realm and then the realm that has like san diego and vampires that door only opens once every 1000 years and so grace is just like there's no way for us to ever get back grace's voice breaks on the last word but her whisper still echoes through the room like a shout <laughs> they're stuck together for a thousand years if we're gonna get some kind of Zodiac Academy crossover, I'm going to shout. We have yet again entered the one bed trope. I have a feeling that these shadow people are gonna pull some weird shit. They're too nice. <laughs> It's a new day and their one bed situation of course ended with Grace accidentally during the night cuddling with Hudson and now he can't think straight. And just now, chapter 49, granted most of these chapters <coughs> are like two to three pages long, so I'll give her that. But chapter 49 is when they start having the kind of banter 
that is sort of recognizable from book two of Crave. Um, so hopefully it gets a little bit better. They're on a farm. Grace is trying to explain what vegetables are to Hudson, even though he knows, but he's like, I can't farm. I'm from London. <laughs> okay, so um, the purple girl has like as I mentioned shadows and one of her shadows is named Smokey and it really really loves Hudson and <laughs> oop purple mom just spilled the beans um Grace goes out to help her in the garden and they're kind of chatting and she's like oh did you meet Hudson at the academy she's like and Hudson like doesn't mind your power and Grace is like no 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 I'm I'm just like normal human you misunderstood and she's like mm. I'm really good at sensing power and you've got a lot. So are you sure? You? Like as a prank, she gets Hudson to go into the lake and now he has leeches on his back? What the f you? And then their picnic got weird. <laughs> Weird picnic um, has been interrupted because the Shadow Queen found out where they were um, and they're coming to arrest Hudson and Grace because there shouldn't be strangers who cross the barrier. So now they have to run away. They say goodbye to their family and friends. Off they go. Oh, I'm cringing. <laughs> so now they're becoming friends and he asks her like what's your favorite memory just trying to like calm her down because she's going a little cuckoo and her favorite memory is with jackson and he's like oh no and she's basically like you know i'm hoping i'm still holding out hope for jackson right like he's my mate hudson is sort of like that's such bullshit and also like you knew him for two weeks honey like we've been together for more than a year are you kidding and also he's like by the way, we have that giant blue thing, that like string that he hasn't really talked to her about. You know, like, mm, I think it means something. Oh God. So they randomly run into this like traveling troop of troubadours and they have to, like the city that they're trying to run to safety to, you need like a visa to come in and they were like listen if you just join our troop um we'll help you with your visa and so they have to perform and apparently grace can't sing to save her life so they're they're pretending that she has a throat infection but um yeah and also like we don't trust these people but we have to for now so they're gonna perform <laughs> He gets on stage and sees that Grace is having a panic attack, so he... <laughs> if you're wondering, he's playing little things. In love with you and all these little things. And apparently everyone in the audience is like swooning. But like, do they know that this is One Direction? Because if One Direction is known in the Shadow Realm, that's pretty impressive. <laughs> Oh yeah, we're back to like peak cringe crave. 400 pages, we get a kiss scene. Yes, of course, there's some kind of festival that they go to. It's crowded and Hudson is like nervously paying attention to keep Grace safe. So Grace is like, why don't we go somewhere private where you can relax? And they start like playing music on their phone. Oh my gosh, wait, it's called Starfall. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, dragons, the dragon that has been chasing them for like two years at this point, um, has found them and is attacking them with its like big bad brother as well. And Grace tries to save Hudson and she does her first transformation into a gargoyle and she has her wings and stuff, but she's still like stone everyone's like oh yeah duh makes sense you were a gargoyle and she's like okay we'll cross that bridge later like let me go kill this dragon <laughs>
I'm exhausted. So they kill the dragon, but we find out that the dragon isn't just a dragon, it's a time dragon, which means that they are the guardians of the rift, like the barrier that they crossed. So they're not going to stop until they kill Hudson and Grace, but like maybe they won't, maybe they can send them home. I don't know. So they're like, ooh, bummer, we killed one of them, but don't worry, they're gonna come back but they only come back in the dark and it's only dark for three days every three months in the shadow realm. So like every three months they have the Starfall festival where it's dark for three days and that's the only time the dragons can come. And so they have to wait another three months to see another dragon and they're, they gotta decide, are we gonna kill it or are we gonna let it kill us and then maybe we go home? <sighs> Once again, like the dragon battle scene was about 40 pages i mean it's just once again we're seeing the this has been way too long kind of writing style that i now associate with crave um yeah <laughs> okay so hudson like weeks and weeks and weeks have passed guys like almost three months have passed right and Hudson has been like avoiding Grace. I don't know. And she thinks it's because he's hungry and like he's really sick, whatever. So then they have this whole like talk um, where Grace is like, you don't want me anymore, blah, blah, blah. So of course we get our first like should have been a sex scene. But then he's like, oh my God, I'm so glad you're okay with the mating bond because she has been practicing her gargoyle powers and she's like been talking about how she can see all of her strings of power, right? So he's like, oh, she's seen the blue string. That's kind of why he's been avoiding her because she he thought that she would be mad that he didn't tell her about the mating bond. So he's like, phew, glad you aren't pissed. And she's like, what did you just say? <laughs> okay, so it took like zero seconds for her to be okay with the mating bond, by the way. Um, but now just like the way that they talk about each other, like they went from being she's the bane of my existence to this in like a couple pages. But it's okay. It's okay. They might die within the next chapter. So the dragon is coming back. Um, buckle up, everybody. <laughs> no, I knew it. I knew it. So the cat S character, the shadow character named Smokey that loves Hudson and has been very active in this story. Um, I just haven't mentioned her because she just like doesn't, she just hates Grace, you know? Um, so she's like a funny little Hudson's shadow, if you will. Um, I knew, I knew it because she was not mentioned in Crave, but she dies. <laughs> she saves Hudson from the dragon and like jumps in front of the flames and dies. <laughs> okay. I don't know what I just read. So the mayor of town who I think I mentioned, but he's just like bad vibes since the beginning. Turns out he's a time wizard. And essentially he is human, like a wizard, but human who tried to make a time rift in order to go back in time and like save his daughter from an untimely death. And because of that, he got stuck in the shadow realm and the dragons aren't just like guardians of the barrier, they're guardians of like people who fuck with time. So they're not only coming after Hudson and Grace, they're coming after the mayor. Um, and so now that all of the dragons have been killed, the mayor is free to like continue his time quest. I guess like if he succeeds, obviously like that's gonna change the timeline, right? So like if Grace and Hudson ever get out of the Shadow Realm, like who, their lives might not be the ones that they think they're returning to, right? Because he has screwed up the timeline. I don't really know. He also killed one of the people in the band that Hudson and Grace joined, like just randomly. I'm confused at this point. This whole like time stuff is messing me up and I'm also skimming it because it's really boring. And I just wanna know how it ends and why Grace doesn't remember any of this happening. This has been two, like two years of her life. She found out that she's mates with Hudson. They have had lots of steamy, sexy time. And then she just wakes up and doesn't even know who Hudson is. 
and he has to spend like an entire book in her head playing her flow rider to like hopefully get the memories going can you imagine she also knew how to fly like she knew everything ahead of wild i just want to know so hopefully by the time i check back in it will be to tell you how this ends because this is so long okay so this is kind of what happened he absorbs the power of the dragons that got killed and now he's gonna go across the barrier and do his thing okay okay oh is this the ring that he bought her in the book anyway so basically he got her a ring which is this like magic ring that they promise to never forget each other and so hopefully even if the timeline changes they'll still remember each other but clearly something fucked up so let's find out okay i thought i was going to be able to recap this all at the end but there's actually a lot of stuff happening that i need to keep track of so they need another time dragon to kill the mayor before he crosses the border. Where are they going to find another time dragon? Coincidentally, there was a gargoyle, not Grace, another gargoyle that came to the town and like turned herself into stone and the dragon that she was fighting in order to like stop the mayor from powering up or whatever i don't know grace talked to the gargoyle and they agreed that like she would release the dragon and the gargoyle's gonna die but for you know the good of mankind they're gonna release the dragon but now for some reason they can't let the mayor be killed by dragon fire because for some reason that will reset the shadow realms timeline you your your friends and family will cease to exist so how are we supposed to kill him nothing but the energy of time itself can kill him there are literally only 50 more pages left most battle scenes that tracy wolf writes are like 100 pages what is gonna happen i know that the next book in the series that is gonna come out soon takes place in this realm like i know it has to do with the shadow queen so if this is i don't know let's find out so they want to like pop him with power three two one pull good ah! <laughs> is that Tell me that that's not okay, awesome. Is that it. that's okay, awesome? No, that's so sorry. That's okay. okay, the mayor exploded. Good. And then Grace absorbed too much power, so she was also gonna explode or something like that. And so Hudson grabbed her and like did something, and they, I don't know, evaded a massive arrow of time magic that was gonna kill them. I don't I I'm so fucking lost. <sighs> okay. So where did I leave you? So they made it back to the lair safely and they know now how to get home. So they like get home and obviously that is where book two of Crave starts and Grace doesn't remember shit, right? And so the epilogue is starting from where Crave four ended. So she's, I thought they were outside. I thought they were under a tree, but apparently now they're like in an apartment. It doesn't really matter anyway. Um, she's like, I remember everything, oh my god, and they have like a very long l love confession scene, even though they've already said that they love- Anywho, do you want to know what the next books are about? <laughs> the continuation of Crave. Yes, it takes place in the Shadow Realm. What are they doing? They're getting Smokey back. They think that Smokey didn't die. The cat. That's what the books are going to be about. <laughs> okay, so I've had a day. I've had a day. So I'm going to go like literally take a nap. It's like 6 p.m. It's 5.27. I'm going to take a brief nap. I'm speechless. I don't think I want to read anymore, but who knows? But anyway, that's, what's this even called? Charm. That's charm. Oh my God. It's so funny that like, charm as one book takes place over the span of like two years and crave takes place in two weeks <laughs> that big fucking book is just two weeks anyway okay i digress i have i have to log off i have to stop talking about this book i have to delete it 
remove the download from my Kindle finally. Um, and I will see you guys later. Thank you so much for always being around. I hope you enjoyed. <laughs> I hope I helped um, your curiosity a bit. And yeah, I really hope Smokey is still alive. I have a good feeling. <laughs> but anyway, okay. Bye. See you next time. Good luck with whatever you're reading. Um... <laughs>